you mentioned that Daniel Levy came in for you. Was it on deadline day? Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> how did I know that? <laughs> because that's how Daniel works. Um, yeah, I was, I, was, I was in talks with Spurs and Liverpool during that time, as well as one or two other clubs. But I was still contracted to Man City. But Man Manchester City would have had to rip my contract up on the last day. Um, they would have never allowed me to go to Spurs, never allowed me to go to Liverpool if they knew that was going to be the case. So I told Manchester City I'm going to go and sign for Cardiff. So they agreed, um, ripped my contract, last, contract up last day. Spurs had to move someone out. They got that person out on the last day. Liverpool did, I think it was Ngog. I travelled up to Liverpool, doing a medical. For um, Liverpool. For Liverpool, sorry, yeah. Then Spurs are on the phone. I had to get out of the, the I was having an MRI scan on, on, my, on my legs at the time. I had to get out, speak to Spurs. Well, so you're having an MRI scan on your legs and you take a call? It was, the, it actually it got interrupted, <laughs> said, look, there's a phone call, you have to go and take it. So actually I'm on the Liverpool club doctors with me as well. So go and speak to Spurs. They say, um, we're offering you exactly the same as what Liverpool are offering you. Um, you all you've got to do is go to a solicitor's office just across the road in Liverpool, I said, what about uh, my medical? You don't need a medical. Last minute, you're fine. We'll just get it signed and get it done now. But actually, I'm with Liverpool at this present moment. And, and don't forget, I am a Liverpool supporter as well. So it was now put me back in the, in the scanner signing for Liverpool. But that was my... and I had one of... simple now, do you want it? <laughs> yeah. We and him just met and went, uh, <laughs> what do you think? What do you want? I think I can hold it. Just me and him. And yeah. right, I'll pay you this. That's fine. That's it. What's the, what's the most bizarre you've been involved in on deadline day? Uh, quite a few, really, but I, I think Robert Yarney could have been near deadline. <laughs> it's funny, that, isn't it? Yeah. It was um, good, he's a good great player. player. Good great business. Player. Come on, remind <laughs> us this 20 years ago. He, he, he got the semi final with Croatia, that great Croatian side. And then in 98, yeah. In 98. And uh, we found out we could sign Robert Yarney. I'd just been watching him in the World Cup and semi final. Are you sure he knows where Coventry is? <laughs> right, bring him in. So he said, it was a lovely fella. And uh, in you come. This was on the Saturday morning. Signed, there you go. Wonderful. We didn't show him anywhere. From Betis, you signed him, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, we didn't show him anywhere, the training ground or anything the pitch. We just took him to a lovely hotel and took him. And then we watched the pre season game. Um, and we got beat 7 1 with Benfica. And you could see, I was sitting beside him, you could see him slumping down his seat <laughs> as the game's going on, you know, and you could see, oh, oh. And then I was going to meet him for dinner later at night with his agent. And then his agent turned up on his tour and said, Where's Robert? He says, Oh, he's off to Real Madrid. I said, Just sign with us. He said, Why is he there? Because the president of Real Madrid phoned his wife and said, Listen, your man can come to us anytime you want. We want him here. But what he, what he's, what, he didn't tell his wife that Real Madrid had wanted to sign him. Because he promised to come to us. So when his wife found out, yeah. oh, she went bonkers. You either come home now or it's divorce. I'm keeping the kids, <laughs> the whole lot. I'm taking everything from it. So he actually went to Real Madrid. And we signed up to Real Madrid on the Tuesday for another 1.2 <laughs> million. And some people, we signed them. He made, made a profit on him as well. In two days, yeah. <laughs> And it disappeared. Yeah, but he right was a good player. He was a top player. He was a top player. You see, I like the sound of that. Yeah, the sound of that one, <laughs> yeah. Top, top, top player he was. Give him for 10 days, you make a million pound profit. <laughs> going back to, just, just go back to the point that Craig made, though, about, about Tottenham. I mean, they, they have done an exceptional, exceptional job. Daniel's done an incredible job. That stadium is, is absolutely breathtaking. The training ground's breathtaking. And what, what Daniel is, He's got some real clever qualities and important qualities for football. He's not frightened to say no. And he's not frightened to do things differently to everybody else there. And he's not scared of the noise. Not scared of the, the noise. noise, he just blanks noise. it out. You know you were talking about earlier on? The, he's blinkered and off he goes. And whatever's happening around about there, the, the media, the whole lot. And people don't do it footballing-wise. You know, they've got... I, I think it's about the sixth <coughs> biggest turnover in the league. You know, they're not, they're not top four turnover. You know, obviously, once they get the stadium going, they probably will be, but... You know, and they're finishing seconds and, 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 and challenging for Champions League. It's got great manager, great young uh, academy, the way they bring people through. Oh, brilliant. You know, brilliant. most players at the World Cup. I mean, it, it's, uh, you know, my overriding sort of emotion when I went there to look round, and they were brilliant, you know, the way they showed us around the stadium and all the things they were doing, we were talking about a new stand. It was just envy, really. You can't hide, you know, you've got to be honest and just yeah, say, you know, I wish, I wish we were here. You know, strong leadership at the top. Yeah. Strong leadership. And, and, and time served as well, a lot of hard work over a long period of time. And, and, and going back to the transfer window, big decisions 
in this transfer. Yeah. People are screaming. But he's just, he's, he knows his football. I know you I might accept. want to go to a break. No, no, no. And no, no. I, don't I accept all of that. I don't want to go to a break. I, look, I, I don't want to turn this you. into the... Like... I, I want to know, though, I accept all of that, and, and Daniel Levy probably doesn't get the praise he deserves, but can you start next season without making a single sign? Th would that have a detrimental this... effect, or would it not matter absolutely. in Absolutely. I think there's absolutely no problems. And we're also saying... I would still fancy that... them to get in the top four. Yeah, absolutely. I'd still fancy them all day long. And also, that what we don't see is what's coming behind. <laughs> The kids. Yeah, You're saying his academy is good and you've got great kids. He's going, yeah. why should I spend 30 million on somebody and this kid within six months or a year he is would, as good he as would, him? He would know all that. Um, and even the, the Gareth Bale situation. And like, like I said, I don't want to turn this into the, the love hour of Daniel Levy. He's, the manager at the time wanted Gareth Bale out of the football club, wanted to get rid of him. He was the one who said he is not going anywhere. I believe he's going to be... And this is... This is Daniel Levy as well. So all the credit, he can see players as well. He knows what this player is, is going to be in the next couple of years. So when he went to Real Madrid, they sold him for that amount of money. There was one or two people taking credit. There was one man who should have took all the credit. That should have been him. It was him. And, it was and him if you talk about him. momentum and think, you know, yes, I do, I do agree that, you know, some, the signings do help everybody's belief system and, you know, it's good to see a couple of fresh faces. Yeah, but it and, can only be for, maybe for six weeks or, Steve? Uh, yeah, you it know, might only be for six weeks, but it, but, yeah. it, but, it, but it helps. And and you would say as a manager, you know, often you do need one or two. You know, it's not you couldn't just always say you know, you've lost one or two or, or, or you've got one or two that are getting older. But, you know, they've got a lift coming, haven't they? Because they're going into this un unbelievable stadium. Yeah. So, that's the, you know, that club doesn't yeah. need any... That's the don't really don't, don't, they don't need any, really need the same. They don't need any faux optimism, yeah. do they, yeah. about the future, really? No, that's the fresh... That's and the I think fresh the fans, what I see, their fans believe in it. You know, fans... The, the, most fans are much smarter than people, you know, give them credit for. You know, the fans understand they've kept Harry Kane. I was going to you know, say, they've, kept they've the, already the made the talent. best signing. You know, they've, they've made the best signing of this yeah. transfer window. Kane that, or was, Poch. that was Kane. Yeah, Poch, of course. Pochettino, of course. He but was now on a long Harry contract. Kane now signing, because usually they've lost down the years their history of losing their top, top players. But Pochettino said he wanted that. players when he signed that contract. Look, I mean, didn't he say when he wanted yeah. them, though? He seems fine, though. I'm, <laughs> I'm quite more. comfortable That's with everyone, his attitude towards this transfer. More. Yeah. Whenever you are, we're, we're just too short. Just too a, short. Yeah. yeah, it always goes to the owners. Just yeah. another two. That's all we need. <laughs>